the press conference with Daniel Abraga, the founder of Define AI. Um, I believe we have a statement that you want to read out and an announcement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. If you do have any questions, please put your hands up, and then we come to you with a mic. Give us your name and your outlet, and we'll go into questions from there. But first, Daniela, up to you. Thank you. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am thrilled to announce the launch of our uh, a new uh, uh, project uh, in AI. It's called Accelera AI. It's um, a conversational AI uh, project, 75% uh, funded by the government of Portugal. Uh, within the Recovery and Resilience Program that uh, uh, the EU has launched uh, in 2020 on, under the scope of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, context. Um, I think this is the first milestone to the Center of Excellence in AI hub uh, in Portugal that we started uh, discussing with the government of Portugal in 2019. Uh, I, I, uh, the whole uh, context around that story is that, as you can, uh, as you know, I live in the United States. Uh, I, we have, I am the founder and CEO of Define AI, which is a company in uh, the AI space. And uh, I've been, in my 22 years of career, uh, witnessing the deeper gap that, the, that Europe has been uh, growing against uh, the United States in terms of AI development. Uh, I believe that uh, Portugal can be a beacon of uh, innovation in Europe. And uh, this is the first milestone to that. We are 10 billion euros uh, uh, a year and 10 years behind the United States in what it takes to build a parity uh, in terms of AI. But this is, and there are many initiatives across Europe in different areas of AI. We are focused in human computer interaction, but this is one of the ones that uh, uh, are, in my opinion, more revolutionary in and more uh, aligned with the talent we have also and we can attract to Portugal. Um, so again, it's conversational AI, which is automation of uh, virtual agents. So think, think, think about uh, the ability of buying uh, tickets or submitting your uh, university application or your taxes. Uh, <coughs> With, uh, with the help of an, assist, with a, an agent that guides you through the interface and that you can converse with. Inst so conversational AI it is applicable uh, mostly to customer support what, and customers are not only uh, our customers and citizens, it's everyone who has an interaction with a, an enterprise or or public administration um, function. Uh, the pandemic made it more clear that we cannot rely on uh, physical meetings and offices uh, to get things done. This is accelerating precisely that interaction with uh, services and, and uh, public sector. Uh, we're going to, our consortium is uh, composed, it's, this is a EU framed consortium like, it's, uh, we are the leaders of the consortium, we have the top universities in Portugal building AI, Faculdade de Ciências de Lisboa, Instituto Superior Técnico, and their uh, specific uh, R&D centers. We have associated universities and a network all over the country, uh, which, which is Clarín uh, Network. We have uh, NOSH and uh, DevScope uh, with us as well, and IBM and Microsoft as technology partners. Um, we have, uh, we're, we're, this is a three year long project that starts effectively now. 
uh, we, we are estimating to hire 150 FTEs in this uh, consortium. It's a 34.5 million euro of investment uh, with 75% um, co-funded by the government. Uh, the innovation of this technology is in how you uh, use the data. Uh, it's uh, conversational AI as a technology itself is becoming mainstream in the United States and in the markets that are GDP 15 ranking countries. Portugal is in a GDP 49 number and it will be a long road to get to us interacting with computers and services in European Portuguese given the dimension of the digital presence of European Portu Portuguese. It's the same thing for a lot of other under-resourced digital languages. So with our approach, which comes from big data to small data and from uh, live data to synthetic data, we believe that we're going to be able to disrupt these type of technologies in a very short time. Uh, and I'm going to present this at 3.30 p.m. today at the conf, uh, at the panda stage, I believe. And now I'm open to questions. Any questions? Yes. Hello, <clears throat> I'm from the Irish Times in Dublin. Uh, I wonder why does it matter that we're behind the Americans in AI? Why does it matter so much? Well, we saw how, the, how it matters when Europe ran out of supply chain and chips and all the basic essentials that allow us to operate a daily life with quality, that's, that's how it matters. Uh, AI is one of these technologies that very soon will be as important as the internet to, for us to survive. So we're getting there. Uh, Elton from Marketing in Asia. Uh, we are doing a content creators marketplace and I'm a fan of AI for content creation marketing NLP3 technology. Uh, one of the things I noticed from your website, it says that <clears throat> you're doing a fair, accessible and ethical AI, but so far there's no defined current national standards globally like what is considered a fair because of moral values and fundamentals. So would you be able to like, highlight, is there any pathway of direction of defined AI in this era? Thanks. So, Define AI has, uh, has always operated. operated. Uh, we were ahead of our time before GDPR kicked in uh, by uh, uh, bringing transparency to the data that we sell to our customers and builders of AI, uh, by, bringing, uh, by bringing fair pay to the crowdsourcing members, to the crowd members that supply data to us and like uh, the traditional model of you sign terms of service you're using a service for free and you're getting your data taken away uh, we always explicitly uh, brought up legal uh, 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 documents to to the people we were uh, purchasing data from and uh, and and no traceability to identification of the people we sell data to, we sell data from to the to the builders of AI. So this uh, fairness is a concept that is broader than the data. It all starts in the data, uh, transparency and understanding uh, the breakdown of the, uh, the where the data comes from allows you to co to, to control bias and trade less biased or bias aware models because sometimes you actually need bias corpus to fill a gap of a model that is biased uh, and in the human computer interaction this is more critical because we deal with people people uh, with gender different genders with different ages with different backgrounds and dialects and and skin colors so that is uh, we, we've been always doing that so actually bringing to the Accelerate AI uh, learning all of this, what we're going to have to do is now move to the next level, which is model uh, fairness and model building in a way that you can trace back which built 
and understand where which which is the what's the impact of each model in in the product or in the delivery. Hola Daniela, bom dia. Eu do Echo. Uh, I will make the questions in English. I would like to, to clarify two points quickly. When the Portuguese citizens can benefit from this solution and the open source, and I would like to understand, you said 150 jobs, mm -hmm. will all of them be in Portugal or in other countries? They, they must be in Portugal. This is the rule of the game here for the PR, for, for, for the PRF, the Recovery and Resilience Plan. Um, and we, we that, that it doesn't mean we don't have to import people sometimes in this field, but they all have to be uh, working in Portugal, uh, paying taxes in Portugal, and expensing in Portugal. Um, how are the cities going to benefit from this? At, at the first instance, it depends on so the technology is there, easily customizable because it's a data problem to any business that interacts with citizens or with, interacts with customers. Uh, it, it, as long as there is a service, which could be the, the, uh, the city hall of Lisbon, receiving a web summit like this next year, and actually having uh, a virtual agent on a kiosk or on your phone, or actually in all of those surfaces, explaining you the attractions of, Port of, of Lisbon, uh, how to move around, uh, telling you where to go in your schedule. These are things that AI can start augmenting in our lives. And even, uh, so, and of course, it, if you deploy that in an Oculus, you, you can, or not in an Oculus, in a, in a, in a, in a smart glass, you, you can actually even, as you move, get information around what, in an augmented reality way around what's going in your environment. Um, AI is just the piece that allows the, all these things to happen. Of course, you need APIs to connect to these information and services. You need, um, you need surfaces, so the hardware piece to, to deploy on. Um, but as long as there is a, 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 an enterprise or a, 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 someone with a lot of demand like this, it, there's a there's a way and and this this technology would be very easily available for that um, thank you so much for joining us that's unfortunately all the time we have today um, thank you Daniela uh, uh, sorry maybe I should have <laughs> a little shorter thank you um, we have more press conferences if you want to stick around the next one is in 10 minutes um, so